Hello, my name is Jeff Messier. I'm a professor in electrical and computer engineering in the Schulich School of Engineering. And this is the fifth module in my computer networks lecture series where I talk about error detection or detecting an error in a transmitted frame or packet. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is why this is a problem because, you know, it might seem to some at first glance that this detecting errors should be easy. Obviously, it's easy for humans. You know, if we download a program that gets corrupted, the program doesn't work. If we are watching a video stream that gets some bad bits in it, we see the picture gets garbled, the audio gets bad. If we receive an email filled with kind of garbled nonsense. We know that some bits have been corrupted. And so it seems like super easy for humans to detect errors. However, this is actually a real challenge for the data link layer, for the software that implements the data link layer, for a number of reasons. There's a, a few different components to this challenge. The first one is that the data link layer actually can't understand the payload. So we can understand a movie that we're watching, but right down at the data link layer, it's just received a payload from the layer above, layer three. And that payload basically looks to the data link layer like a random stream of ones and zeros. Even if this is a movie that we happen to be watching, we chop the, the digital information making up that video stream into such small pieces that when we examine any one piece, it's basically impossible to tell what it is or isn't corrupted. It just basically seems like a, a random stream of ones and zeros. And so how is the data link layer supposed to know if one random seeming stream of ones and zeros is correct and the other one is incorrect? The next challenge is dealing with overhead, basically. So as we're going to see, all error detection schemes work by adding overhead information to a frame that will allow us to detect errors. And we typically refer to this overhead as the checksum, and we want to minimize this. So we want to make sure that the overhead that we add is as small as possible, because any overhead bits we're transmitting is basically stealing space from actual user data. And the final challenge that we need to keep in mind is that error detection needs to work super, super fast. So just as an example, you know, kind of a typical Ethernet frame size might be a thousand bytes. And on a 10 gigabit per second Ethernet link, we receive one frame every 800 nanoseconds. So every 800 nanoseconds, we have to check an 8,000 bit frame for errors. And that's pretty quick, actually, when you sort of map that out to sort of typical, you know, clock speeds on processors. So any kind of scheme that we introduce has to be able to be quite easily implemented at a very sort of basic, fundamental, almost logic gate level. And so we're going to look at a number of, well, a number, I guess, basically three main error detection techniques and sort of compare and contrast how well each one of them uh, does when addressing these three um, challenges. So to get started, we're going to talk about arguably the simplest of all error detection schemes, and that is the single parity bit scheme. And this is, you know, in a way almost trivial now. Um, it does still exist in real systems, but it's a, a as, as we're going to see, a, a fairly lightweight error detection scheme. So um, the parity check bit was originally actually developed to provide error detection for um, a, like paper tape <laughs> data entry system. Um, but it does, it does actually live on in modern low-level serial communications. So if you're doing any kind of UART programming, uh, there's still a capability to add a parity bit, and that's basically the, the scheme that we're going to talk about. And so 
to introduce it, we basically have, you can think of the, the parity check bit scheme as having seven bits of payload data, and we're gonna add a single parity check bit to the end of it, and that's gonna be our checksum. So we've got seven bits of payload, one bit of checksum, we're gonna put them together, and you can think of this as forming an extremely simple frame for the purposes of our discussion. So how do we calculate the parity bit? It's basically the modulo two sum of all the bits in the payload. And we're gonna work through an example to, to show you how this works. And so as a result, how do, how do we use this to detect errors? Well, basically because the parity bit is the modulo two sum of the payload, um, our overall eight bit frame payload plus checksum should always have an even number of ones in it. And if we find that we receive a frame with an odd number of ones, then we know for sure that an error has occurred. Okay, now what I'd like to do is give you a bit of an example about how the parity bit checksum scheme works. And this is gonna be part of the lecture where I stop showing you slides and I basically start to write some things on the screen. And you'll notice as we move through this lecture series, I'm gonna use slides for easy to absorb information. So if I'm, or, you know, diagrams that might be tedious to draw. So a perfect example is the protocol stack. I'll throw up a picture of the protocol stack. We'll circle some things. We'll talk about what, you know, each layer does on a high level. That's pretty easy stuff. But when we start to get into some heavier duty mathematics, I am not going to use slides for that. I think putting equations on slides and then just sort of talking about the equations is a big mistake. Um, I much prefer to teach more mathematical concepts just with writing. And uh, if you are taking my undergraduate class, I am not going to give you these notes. So the only way for you to capture this information is for you to write down what I am writing on the screen. And I think that that helps with learning. So again, if I gave you the notes, you would just sort of sit there, you would kind of look at the equations and the notes, you would hear me talk and it would be too passive. I, I want you to sort of actively be writing this stuff down. Not that the parity bit stuff is particularly difficult to understand, but I think it's kind of a nice warm up for us because later on, particularly when we get into um, CRCs, the math does get a little bit heavier duty. So, for ex but for now, anyways, let's do an example of the single parity bit. And so, we said that we have a seven bit payload and a one bit checksum. So let's do some examples of this. So this is the, the payload section of the frame. And let's say we have zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one. That's our payload. Now, we have our parity checksum following it, and it's a single bit, and it's just gonna be equal to the modulo two sum of all of the bits in the payload. And so basically, the parity bit is gonna be equal to one if we have an odd number of ones in the payload, and zero if we have an even number of ones in the payload. And in this case, we have um, an even number of ones, and so the parity bit is equal to zero. If you know we had a, a different payload, for example, one, zero, zero, one, 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 one. In this case, we would have an odd number of bits in the payload and so our parity bit would be equal to one. And so how does this detect errors? Well, let's do a slightly more complete example. So let's take a look now at how the parity bit behaves when there's actual errors that show up in the frame. So let's do a, a, an extended example here where we have a transmitted frame And the payload is zero, one, zero, one, 
zero, one, one. And the parity bit in this case, because we have an even number of ones, the parity bit is zero. So now we introduced the notion of an error pattern back when we were talking about the physical layer. And so I'm gonna use that concept here. So let's say we, we transmit our frame through the channel and some of the bits happen to be flipped due to some interference in the channel, let's say. And it's going to be the last three bits in our frame that get flipped due to errors. And so we represent that with an error mask or an error pattern, if you like. So all of these bits, the first, um, I guess, five bits get through, no problem. So they have zeros to indicate that they were received correctly. And then the last three bits, the errors are indicated by ones. And then to get the actual received frame, we take the exclusive or of the transmitted frame with the error pattern. So maybe I'll just draw a little line here. And it's important to remember that headers and checksums can experience errors just like the payload. Sometimes, you know, people have this sort of strange notion that somehow, you know, the checksum is special and the checksum never receives errors. It's just the payload. But of course, any bit that's transmitted through the channel, whether it's overhead bits or payload can experience an error. And so this is our received frame. Now, how do we check whether or not an error has occurred? Well, remember our parity check scheme is supposed to guarantee that we have an even number of ones in our frame at all times. And so how do we detect if there's an odd number of ones? Again, we just take the modulo two sum of the entire received frame, and it's gonna be equal to one if we have an odd number of ones. And in this case it is, right? So we've got three ones. And so the modulo two sum is equal to one. And so we know that an error has occurred. So far, so good. So now let's do a second example. So for this second example, we have a payload of oh, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. And again, the parity bits are aimed at ensuring that we have an even number of ones in our entire packet. And so we have five ones in our payload. So our parity bit is gonna be equal to one in this case to even that out. And in this case now we only have a two bit error. So that's our error pattern. And so our receive bit is, or sorry, our receive packet. And so to detect our error, we take the modulo two sum of our packet and we've received errors for sure. But the modulo two, as it turns out, this error pattern was such that we still have an even number of errors in our received packet. So the modulo two sum is zero. So we have to assume there's no error, but wait a minute, there was. So this reveals the vulnerability of the parity bit error detection check scheme. If there is an odd number of errors in our packet, the parity bit will detect the, that error pattern. But if there's an even number of errors in the received packet, we're gonna miss it completely. And so there are actually errors that will slip through our scheme. And 
In this case, we would take this received packet, we would assume that it was A-OK, -okay, we would pass it up the protocol stack, somebody would try to play it on their video player and they would get corrupted video. So um, in this case, our error detection scheme would have failed. So while the parity bit scheme is a very simple error detection scheme, it's a super useful place to start because it actually has it shares some of the same properties that are, or it has some of the same properties that are shared by all error detection schemes that really kind of structure the, one of the fundamental, or structures the fundamental nature of how retransmissions work in a network and in a communication system. And so these, um, these four properties, number one is, uh, it adds overhead. So in our case, we had to add a single extra bit to our frame, the parity bit, in order to do our error detection. And this is universally true for error detection schemes. Any error detection scheme that we use adds a checksum or a little bit of redundant information to the frame in order to detect errors. And this, generally speaking, is bad from a throughput point of view. As we add more overhead to our frame, the amount of actual user data we can carry goes down. And so we always want to be minimizing this overhead. The second property of the parity bit scheme is that it is super fast. So basically it's just a big exclusive OR gate and anything that can be implemented using combinational logic at that sort of fundamental gate level can be built into a specialized ASIC or integrated circuit, and it'll go super, super fast. So the parity bit will go as fast as we need it to go. However, it can be fooled. So we saw in our example that an even number of errors will fool the parity bit check scheme, and we will not be able to, to detect an, an even number of errors. So two errors, four errors, six errors, and so on. And this is also a fundamental property of all error detection schemes. When we look at more sophisticated schemes, we can get this, you know, probability of missing an error pattern down to a very, very small number, such to the, down to the point where we can practically say, okay, you know, we can live with this performance, but there's no such thing as an error detection scheme that will always detect all possible error patterns. And so, Error detection schemes, for those um, out there who are into sort of mathematical language, error detection schemes are a sufficient condition for proving that there are errors in the packet, but they're not necessary. So if the error detection scheme indicates an error, we know for sure there's an error in that packet. If it does not indicate an error, we don't know for sure if there's an error in the packet. We can be quite confident that the packet is okay, but we're never gonna know for sure. And finally, the, the fourth property is that the parity check scheme, while it indicates that there is an error, it can't find them. So if the parity bit scheme finds an error, it doesn't know if it's a single bit error or a three bit error or a five bit error. And even if it did, it wouldn't be able to tell where exactly that error had occurred. And so all we know is that there are one or more bad bits somewhere in the frame. And this has big implication for our system because we basically, if our error detection scheme indicates that there's um, one or more errors somewhere in the packet, we have to throw away the entire packet. And this can have pretty big performance um, or give us a pretty big performance hit because some packets can have tens of thousands of bits in them. And if only one of those bits is bad, we have to throw the whole thing away. And we'll, we'll talk a lot more about this in um, the modules coming up.